You told a lie? You confess it! You actually confess it! You told a lie! Family of four, Margaret Lester, widow, age 36. Helen Lester, Margaret's daughter, age 16. And the pious old maiden aunts, Hannah and Hester Gray. Those two, oh my, were they religious. Since they moved in, the mother and daughter had conformed to the old lady's ways. Although the aunts were sweet and loving to their family, their rules were crazy. But this time, with this rule, it was serious. You told a lie? Yes, but uh, that's it. We're going to your mother. As the three made their way to the sick room, outside stood a man. This man was tall, slender, and smart. He was the doctor who, frankly, didn't care about others' opinions. From his diligent and loyal faith, he was labeled as not just the Christian, but the only Christian. <laughs> This girl told a lie. She admitted it too. Mom, forgive me, please. Of course, darling. What are you doing in here? Get out! She needs rest! Leave her alone! Sorry, Doc. It was an important duty. The child lied. Lie? That's the matter? Why, I lie every day! Everyone does it! Why I couldn't go a day without lying? Especially being a doctor. Wouldn't you lie to shield a person from injury or shame? No. Not even your friend? No. Not even your dearest friend? No, I would not. Not even to shield them from bitter pain or misery or grief? No. Nor his soul? Nor his soul. Same with you, Hannah? Yes, because a lie. Any lie is a sin which would cost us our souls. Then you must reform! Reform for the sake of others! Risk your souls! Reform! We can reform for the mother only. We can be the best caretakers ever. Reform. Yes, we can. <laughs> we must. Do you remember that invitation to the Fosters? And that you couldn't go? That, my friends, was a lie. Repute it with another lie. It, it was a lie. The reform has begun. Twelve days later, the mother and child are getting more sick. And the aged sisters looked worn. Their hearts were breaking, but their grit was steadfast. When the mother heard that her sickness was typhoid, she was worried that her daughter might have caught it. Is she well? Mm. What is it? Is she sick? No, she's well. What happened? Oh, no. I couldn't do it. I couldn't tell her the truth. I told a lie. No matter it was a lie, God will hold you accountable for it. After that, the aged women had no other choice. Every morning came the lie, and they later confessed their sin in prayer, not asking for forgiveness, but only wishing they would recognize their wickedness and not be ashamed to excuse it. In the first days, when the child still had strength to hold a pencil, she wrote love notes to her mother in which she concealed her illness. But soon came the day when she could write no more. Helen spent most of the night at a party at the salon's house. Oh, that's wonderful. Let her to do anything her heart desires. Aunt, um, is she still beautiful? More beautiful than ever. <laughs> A little time after, the aunts began forging notes to the mother. Being careful would not matter in this case, as all the mother did was kiss the paper and was completely content on every word from the paper. Aunt Hannah, 
Dear Margaret, sometimes I think I will never hear the child's voice again. Don't say that. Please, Aunt Hannah, go tell her I think of her all the time. I adore her. Oh, don't cry, Aunt Hannah. Hannah praised God for the mother not knowing about the young girl's illness. The time was coming when the girl would have her final breath. Some sobbing would cut the peaceful breathing as she lay in her bed. Oh, Mama, I'm so happy. I longed for you. Now I can die. Here we go to heaven. As the funeral for the girl was over, Hester went to Hannah with some troubling news. She has thrown out. There's no way out. She must have it. As Hester carried it into the room, the last line read, Darling Mousy, we will be together soon. Isn't it good news? It is true. They all say it's true. Another day dawned. Aunt Hannah brought yet another letter to the ailing mother. The letter read, We have but little time to wait, darling mother. Then we shall be together. Aunt Hannah, do you hear the shuffling of feet? Oh yes, it's just a gathering for Helen. There will be music. I hoped you wouldn't mind. Mind? Oh no, give her anything her heart desires. You two are so great to her and to me. God bless you both. I hear her organ. Oh yes, it's her touch. I know it. When I hear a hymn, it seems to open the gates of the paradise. If only I could die now. With the closing of the hymn, another soul passed to its rest. How blessed it was that she never knew. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. For liars, a place is appointed. They will burn in the fires of hell from everlasting to everlasting. Repent! Our sin is great and we have shame. Only perfect repentance make us whole. The strong will prevail and so be saved, but we are lost.